I thought was interesting because of the way that I had brought it up. I had given Barack $250 to pay for Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! That said that if that Hunter Biden laptop story had any arguments against that person. And I want to see how it goes. In retrospect, it's pretty amazing that Barack Obama got as far as he did. In 2004, the summer of 2004, Barack Obama gave the keynote address at the Democratic Convention in Boston. And when he walked to the podium, probably only a small percentage of people in the room knew how to pronounce his name. He was totally unheard of. No one knew Barack Obama. At the time, he was a state senator in Illinois. Four years later, he once again spoke to the Democratic Convention, but this time, as the nominee. Meteoric doesn't begin to describe it. How did this happen? Well, the outlines are fairly well known, though rarely talked about. A small group of Democratic donors, mostly in Chicago, decided that Barack Obama was their guy. He was the vessel for their ambitions. They paid for his campaign. They paved the way for his rise. He spent two years pointlessly in the United States Senate preparing to run for president in 2008. And of course, in the end, he won. But the question was, who was this man? Where did he come from? What did he spend his life doing before he became president of the United States? Well, the news media, whose job it is to answer those questions, spent the entire 08 campaign trying to keep you from knowing the answers. By election day, most Americans knew only one thing about Barack Obama, other than he was handsome and a good communicator, hope and change. But they knew nothing about him, his origins, what he believed, and legitimate questions about those facts were turned away as they often are, with the claim, that's a conspiracy theory, you're crazy, shut up! One of the most interesting moments in the 2008 campaign occurred when a man, like Obama himself, came from out of nowhere to recount his experiences with Barack Obama the man. His name was Larry Sinclair, and he told an amazing story. He said that in 1999, he had encountered Barack Obama in Illinois, had sex with Barack Obama, and then used with him. Sinclair went on to make these claims publicly at a, the National Press Club in Washington to sign a sworn affidavit and to take a lie detector test. But he was dismissed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, guys. OK. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my God. Wow. Are you telling me that the, the black man that I have on a dollar bill? Listen, if you are into men, then you're into men. That's your thing. I ain't listen. That's your thing. That's between you, God, and your wife, right? If that's your thing, President Barack Obama, if, if you're into men, then that's your thing. If you're into men, ain't that the same of the um, name of the donuts, the company that make donuts, into men. But if you're into men, all right, that's your business. But this brother right here is coming out and he's spilling all of the beans, bruh. <laughs> and they saying they smoking together. Come on. How many of y'all believe that? Please tell me how many of you believe it. And I don't care if you can tell me if you believe it based off of the video that you've already seen. A lot of you have already seen this Tucker um, video. Tell me if you really believe it. It's my In fact, he up. was attacked. And like this video Obama too. Obama shills like Ben Smith, the Politico, batted the claims out without refuting them. They're absurd. And the rest of the media followed suit. But the claims weren't absurd. We're not claiming they're true, but they were certainly credible. This was a firsthand account of Barack Obama's behavior by someone who was willing to sworn, sign a sworn affidavit to that effect. So the question is, whatever happened to Larry Sinclair? What's his life been like since? That's an interesting story. It turns out Larry Sinclair is still alive. He lives in Mexico, but today he's in our studio and we're happy to have him. Larry Sinclair, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Now, I will let y'all know, I'm gonna let y'all know this. Um, I am listening. I'm listening with an open heart. Been a Democrat all my life. I voted for Barack Obama twice, all right? And where I am right now is just from my own new understanding of what's going on in the world and me understanding too that I've been duped for a minute based off the information I've been picking up along the way. So that's where I am right now. I am listening to this guy, Larry Sinclair, objectively but i will tell you that i'm more on the skeptical side and i'll tell you why and i'm not going to do a whole bunch of talking after i say this only reason why i'm on the skeptical side is because this is the exact same thing that was done to trump by the other side when they wanted to just slow him down or shut him down they started going to get the story stormy daniels is 
the Stormy Daniels from over here and the uh, other lady from over there and the other lady from over there and anybody who's willing to come forward and say something, they will put in front of the liberals and say, yeah, look at what Trump did, look at who he did. You know what I mean? And so I am looking at this um, with that little bit of skepticism, but also objectively, because I don't trust any of these politicians. And I know that once you're that powerful and you believe that you're untouchable and unstoppable, that they would do something like this. They would do something like this. So that's the, that's my mindset right here. Also know that Tucker Carlson loves to pour gas on stuff and, and set it ablaze. So that's what I'm here for, too. OK, let's go. Uh, where did you meet Barack Obama? Uh, it was by accident. I was in the Chicago area in 99 for Lee Duke's graduation from the Naval Academy. Who's Lee Duke? He's basically my godson. Okay. Um, I had hired a limousine service. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Did you live in Chicago then? No, no. I was actually living in Colorado. I had flown in the night before. Okay. So, um, I had hired a limousine service, had made it the driver aware that if Lee couldn't leave the base, because once they graduate, some of them actually get their assignments and they're shipping out and they can't leave the base that I was still interested in going out and had asked the driver if he knew anybody that was available that might want to show me, you know, Chicago. And he said he did. So well, who was the driver? Uh, his name was Jameer um, Motani. It was with Five Star Limo. So you're just a guy who's in town for the night and it sounds like you're looking to party, actually. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you're really saying. Yeah. 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 Well, I was in town for a few nights, but yeah, I was definitely looking to party. And did you make that clear to the driver? Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There was no misunderstanding. How how being... how direct were you about that? Uh, extremely. <laughs> extremely. <laughs> extremely. Okay. Yeah. There was there was no doubt what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, he was looking for a good he time. He picked me up at my hotel in Gurney and drove into Chicago, pulled up in a bar outside, and there's this guy that's introduced to me as barack obama it was literally that casual that wow he just pulled up ready to have a good time and he met barack obama when he was just a fun loving really really young white boy had you ever heard of him no did the driver know him yep the driver definitely knew him because the driver said that he was a friend interesting what how would the driver be friends with barack obama i only found out later of uh, dealing with a reporter from bloomberg news that apparently the limousine company had been doing business with tony resco oh. that at the time was somehow as affiliated was with barack Obama's obama orbit. Yeah. yes yeah. interesting so he knew barack obama and in his view barack obama liked the same kind of partying you were looking for yeah okay so sex and drugs and upwards yeah, the sex part i wasn't so sure about until of course you know you you make your move but it became obvious very quick um the coke part i thought was interesting because of the way that i had brought it up so I'm stepping on your story. So you pull up, and I apologize. So you pull up to this bar. The driver is, real is stuff basically right scouting some for, for you to hang out with. Correct. There's this guy, Barack Obama. Have you ever heard of Barack Obama? Never, okay. never. We're having drinks. I mentioned the fact that I could use something to wake up. I was extremely exhausted. So you went into the bar? <coughs> yes, sir. What kind of bar was it? I'm trying to remember. I've been trying to remember the name. I know that the glasses had three X's on them uh -huh. uh, because I remember taking one home uh, for a friend of mine. What, but I mean, generally characterize it was it, it a was it was class up, bar, no, it gay was bar, strip scale. bar. It was upscale, quiet, wasn't really that, really didn't have a lot of energy to it. It was yeah. more relaxed, more like a lounge as opposed to somewhere where people would go and get loud and crazy, Yeah, which made it easier to talk. But like I said, when I brought up the fact that I could do something to wake up, um, he immediately knew what I was referring to, had made it clear that I was looking for and I really was and had made the suggestion that he knew where we could get it and we left to go get it. Interesting. Did he say what he did for a living? 
No, nope. I had no idea that he was a representative in the Illinois House. I had no idea he was in politics. Hey, Alicia. I just knew that he was supposedly married and at the time was going through some, some issues with the marriage. He said that? That was made clear. Yeah. Um, did he say what kind of issues? No. Nope. Thank you for pulling up, Alicia. So you said, I'm looking for someone to wake up. He knows you're referring to and I know where to get it. What happens next? We get back in the limo. The driver takes us wherever it is that Barack had instructed him to take us. I had given Barack $250 to pay for He gets out, comes back. I start putting a line on a CD tray to snort. Uh, and you're, you're in, in the, the limo. limo. Yep. Driving or parked? No, the driver's driving. Yep. I start to put a line on a, on a CD tray. Man, he just and straight to him. I just happen to notice that he pulls something else out of his pocket. And next thing I know, he's got a little pipe and he's smoking. So I don't have an issue with it. I mean, hold on, hold on. So he went in there to buy some salute. He went in there to buy some and they threw in something extra. So if you buy two grams, we're going to throw in one gram free of some. You know, we bought some. So now I'm going to give you some free. Go ahead and try this. This just now came out. It's hot on the market. It's sweet in the nation. It's going to drive you crazy. It's going to drive your old lady crazy. Not knowing that he had a man inside. Okay. He just had an entanglement the same way that Will Smith and Jada Pinkett had an entanglement. Hopefully, Chris Rock don't say anything negative about it because I would hate to be slapped by Michelle Obama. Some people smoke. Some people snort. Smoking. the Yes. So as I'm doing a line, I just start, this is the part where you, you know, you kind of make your move to, to see where things are going. So I just started rubbing my hand along his thigh to see where it was going. And it went the direction I had intended it to go. Oh my gracious. This dude was really out to have some fun that night, bro. He said, yo, I got some money and you got the ride. I'm gonna give you 250, go buy some. And he come out there with some surprise and then next thing you know, after they snort and, and smoke, and this is blowing my mind because it's, it's Barack Obama. So the night became somewhat active and drug wise in the limo. So you hit on him. Did he seem shocked by that? Not at all. Yeah. I mean, if you're smoking with a stranger in the back of a limo, like you got to imagine things are might go crazy places. Well, not only imagine it. I look at it this way. I look, I've done a lot of crazy things in my lifetime. I'm a pretty good judge of character, and I pretty much know whether or not I can move in a certain direction with an individual. I didn't feel that I was going in the wrong direction. I just wasn't so sure how much I could trust the individual right. at, at first. And that was probably one of my bigger concerns. But the fact that I was already becoming somewhat buzzed, eh, you kind of throw caution to the wind. You weren't sure you could trust the individual. What does that mean? When you meet someone out of the blue and you go to a level that you're doing drugs with or you're giving money to purchase or even for activity, you have to be sure that you can trust them. And when I say trust, I mean that you're not going to end up being robbed Thank or you that for the you're not going to end up having a knife stuck into you, right. you know, from one direction or another, or that you're not going to pull up somewhere and all of a sudden the car door is going to open and you got five people pulling you out of it. Totally. That's what I mean when I yep. say trust yep. someone. And, you, and, and, you, and him, him living that life, he was living a pretty dark life. I mean, if you're hopping in people's cars, going to dark spots in the, in the country, looking for cocaine and crack, but the same people that sell cocaine sells crack, all right? And the likelihood of you being robbed, you being something happening to you, like somebody taking your body, taking your manhood or your womanhood, if you're a woman, you know what I mean? That's that's very likely. But he just said he's not new to this. This is something that he do on the regular, So, but he knew what to look out for.